Okay, this is a long one. I learned a lot today, so buckle in. We started with the Freedom Trail Tour, um, where they take you around this, like, uh, you'll see video of it, but it's this, it's the Freedom Trail is a kind of brick line, but it leads you to different historic sites in Boston. That's a good sign, awesome. Well, friends, welcome to Boston. How are we doing today? We're doing well? Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't believe you. That little uh, line is the Freedom Trail. This is some church, but it was used for a lot of meetings, so it's pretty famous. This wasn't part of the tour, but we saw the first subway ever. That was pretty cool. This is the yeah, old city hall. There, um, the most notable yes. thing about it is probably who's right, buried Brandon. there, oh. including um, Winthrop, who was the founder of Boston, and William Dawes, who was one of the writers on the night of Paul Revere's ride. Um, this Chipotle is actually very historic. Um, it used to be the site of Anne Hutchinson's house, who was a witch, not a real witch, but was banished for being a witch because she read and she preached and she was a woman, so that wasn't okay. So she was banished and later unbanished, I think. Um, but also after that, it became, her house was destroyed in a fire. And then after that, it became an apothecary. And then after, but, and, and then became a few more things. But the most famous thing it was, was a publisher's, and I forget the name, I think it's like Tinker's Publishers. And that's where um, Louisa May Alcott published. That's where Thoreau published Emerson, like a lot of, that's where uh, Longfellow published his famous poem that um, made Paul Revere famous. So a lot of um, the works that made Boston this literary hub was at that corner that is now a Chipotle. This is the um, state house. Um, so a lot of really important meetings have happened here. Um, famously, it's where the Boston Massacre happened. So right outside yeah, over here is massacre. where the Boston Massacre was. This is Faneuil Hall. It um, used to be a center of commerce, so it had shops, still has shops today. Um, and it also is a meeting house, lecture house. So people like Samuel Adams, James Otis, and Fred Frederick Douglass have spoken here. This is the new city hall that replaced the old city hall that I showed earlier. It's, uh, they all think, everyone in Boston thinks it looks pretty ugly, um, but it was made in a style called brutalism, which was popular for a very short time. This is Beacon Hill. We were gonna go to Acorn Street, but they were doing construction, so this was the best I got. Next was Boston uh, Tea Party Museum. So it's an interactive experience where um, you kind of pretend like you're a part of the Boston Tea Party. I'm off to throw tea. Meeting for the to see what we're gonna do about this about this tax this this tea app. These are the roles we were assigned. Martin's Thomas Chase, a Quaker, and a distiller. Uh, I am Benjamin Eads. I was a co-publisher of the Boston Gazette, and. This is a list of people we know were at the Boston Tea Party. I'm pointing to the person I was assigned to. Time, dumping the tea was an act of treason, punishable by death. So all the members who were part of the Boston Tea Party, all the participants, agreed not to you know, tell anybody that they were a participant or that they knew, who, or, or that they knew someone who was a participant. So everyone who went was disguised and of course, these men know each other, so a lot of them can tell each other's voices, and everyone kind of knows who's part of the Boston Tea Party, but um, they're all hiding it. They're all hiding the fact that they that anyone was ever in the Boston Tea Party. Um, so all these names only really came out 50 years after the fact, um, when people would write it in their autobiographies, or they would just come forward and say, you know, now that everything's over, hey, I was part of the Boston Tea Party, 
Um, some people claim to be at the Boston Tea Party, and they definitely were not. Um, but those are the names of people who came forward and uh, were most likely part of the Boston Tea Party. Uh, what's really interesting is that my guy, Benjamin Eads, uh, was, who was actually part of the Loyal Nine, which was a group that was the predecessor to the Sons of Liberty. So he, it was, just not, it was literally just nine guys, and they kind of started the group that would become the Sons of Liberty. Um, but most, or not most, but a lot of those names on that list come from a list that he made, because he was there, and he made a list of other people who were there and just kind of kept it in his drawer, and then after his death, um, his kids found it or something, and they and they shared it. So, um, yeah, I don't know why he made that list. He was a journalist, so maybe it was just kind of in his nature. He thought that this would be good information if, like, one day he wanted to talk about it more. I'm not really sure, but he kind of, you know, had the possibility to snitch on all his friends. Um, yeah, so that was my guy. <laughs> but it was really interesting because... Cause, uh, because the tour guy goes, yeah, and a lot of these names come from Benjamin Eads. And I go, I'm Benjamin Eads, that's me. Um, there was one person who did spill the beans that he was in the Boston Tea Party, because um, he got drunk a few nights later and started saying it to everybody. Um, and he was arrested, but he was acquitted because uh, he knew that you have to have two witnesses to even charge you with that crime or with treason. So, because no one was willing to come forward to say that, yeah, they were also at the Boston Tea Party, he was acquitted. So, only one arrested, and also the only one acquitted. I mean, I remember else it was, it was secret until 50 years later, and then it was revealed slowly, bit by bit, who had actually been at the Boston Tea Party. More interesting facts, a lot of today's Boston is actually land that they moved there. There was just water, and they were like, we need more Boston, and they just put more land there from hills. They took the hills and they put that land where Boston is now. The, inter the airport that I flew in from, is that's not natural land, that is man-made put there land. And so this map, everything that's raised is what Boston originally was and everything that's kind of not raised is Boston what it is now and all of that is not natural land. So I won't add it to this video because it's way too long already. But ask me about Granary uh, Burial Ground because I learned so much. And I took no pictures because I think that's weird and creepy and I don't want to do it. But I learned a lot about um, a lot of people who were buried there. So it's pretty interesting. Just, yeah, Let me know. Let me know and I'll give you the facts.